Oh my gosh, guess what you guys? The super cool people at Morton James Public Library in Nebraska City um, are, is sponsoring this video, my Rabbit Tails video. This is Rabbit Tails. It's for their Tails and Tails Kids program starting in June of 2021. So Tails and then Tails like stories. Isn't that cool? I think that's so fun. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to give them a shout out. Thank you for sponsoring this video. I super appreciate that. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about what I did with this because the end of the video doesn't show that I wired it with a couple of beads. And I just twisted the wire around a pencil. The wire is 20 gauge wire. Mine happens to be Darius brand. Um, you can get any 20, 25 gauge wire at the hardware store. And the beads are from Michaels. So if you wanna do that, if you wanna paint it on a piece of paper, tape it down so it doesn't buckle, tape it down to a piece of cardboard. If you wanna, use markers or watercolor, color pencil, whatever you have at home. Don't worry about it. You don't have to paint this in acrylic paint. You just, just have some fun with it. The traceable's on my website. It's four inches by four inches, which is the size of this little canvas panel. But you can print it out 200%, which would be eight by eight, which would be this size. This is a canvas board from Michaels too. But if you print it out eight by eight and want to color it with markers, that's totally cool. Do what your art heart feels like doing. And this is just what the pack looks like from Michaels. It just, it's really inexpensive. It comes in a pack. Um, the canvas board is fun to paint on. Just wanted to tell you about that. I'm super excited. And now let's get started. Let's see what I've got going on here. And I'm gonna try something a little different. I've got a piece of cardboard here to keep me on camera. Of course, usually when I go off camera is when I pick it up, because I pick it straight up, but as I go up, it looks like it goes to the right. I need to pick it up and pull left. So I don't know, as I'm looking at that, I don't know how much that's gonna help me. Um, these are two four by four inch cam canvas panels from Michaels. Um, I was gonna paint ornaments on them and there were two that I didn't get painted. And then I've got my traceable. There's my bunny butt. So what I did was is I found two Creative Commons zero, zero, CC zero photos. Um, I don't know if it was from Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-E-L-S.com, if they were from Unsplash or probably a combination. Um, but I found a cute butt angle, but I couldn't see the head because it probably would be down here. And then I found a back of a head on another bunny and I put them together in Photoshop. But I don't feel comfortable showing you the actual photo I made in Photoshop because I don't know that they're, um, they're licensed for use on YouTube. But there's the traceable. And then I mixed a pink, <clears throat> excuse me guys. It's kind of a dusty rose pink. It's really pretty. So I used some, here, let me scoot, scoot my palette in. So that bright pink color is medium magenta. And if you don't have that, and you have quin quinacridone, use that. If you just have red, mix some white with one of your reds. It's all right, it's, it's all good. Just use what you have. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy stuff. And then, so about I had about a, well, let's say half of this blob is the uh, medium magenta, and then about a quarter of it is the unbleached titanium. And about another quarter of it is the Naples yellow. And just use the yellow you have, use the other colors you have, and it's really just kind of a darker version of light portrait pink. And I just like having this on hand because it, it speeds up. I don't, you know, I don't have to mix. Um, but in this case, I wanted a little bit darker pink yeah, let's see how this looks. I wanted a little darker pink for my background. I don't know why, just did. I'm trying to decide where to put it. Oh yeah, that's lighter. It's pretty. And then titanium white. OK, 
Okay, and then I painted the background. Well, I wrote the word love on it, and I've already got one painted, and I thought, I don't usually use a round brush. A lot of times I use a filbert or a flat brush. That's a filbert. Um, you can use any brush you want. And then I just painted swirls. I think this one's gonna be really fun. I think you'll really like it. It's simple. Um, I don't think you can get it wrong. You can't get the background color wrong. You know, just have fun playing with paint. I think the background I think is sometimes the most fun because you're just like a kid playing with swirls. One thing nice about the round brush is it gives you, um, oh here, let's try this first. Get some more pink on here. Oh, I didn't check to see if I was on camera. Hope all that was on camera. Um, one thing nice about a round brush, I'm gonna kind of clean it off. I'll grab some white. And you can make some pretty smooth, fun round swirls with it. Or you can kind of lay it on its side, almost like you're scumbling. That makes a nice background. Okay guys, I'll be back in a sec. So let me know if you like watching me paint these backgrounds because they're all kind of similar. You, you're you gonna do them how you like to do them and the colors you like to do them. And it, it's gonna have your own handwriting to it. So I'm thinking I probably shouldn't be showing all of me painting the background. <laughs> but let me know in the comments, it's super helpful. I really appreciate your support and all your help. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention that I had drilled holes um, in the canvases. You can see it better when I flip it over. And then just painted a little white paint in there to kind of seal it up. Just a little acrylic paint. Okay, I'm gonna dry this again with the hair dryer. Okay, I forgot to mention, I don't think I mentioned that the round brush I was using for the background is a number 10 Simply Simmons. I got it at Michael's. Um, I really like the Simply Simmons. They, they're well made, they're not very expensive. Uh, they don't drop hairs. And those are all great qualities in a brush. They don't come loose. Uh, if you leave them in the water, these the wood will expand and the paint will crack. But um, that's not a big deal. Just peel, here's one. Let's peel the paint off. And then I also forgot to mention that I wrote the word wrote the word love in watercolor pencil. These are from Michaels. Um, I have another brand here. I think it's over by my uh, my big easel. So that works great because that just dissolves right into the paint. And I think that's about it. This is a chalk pastel, just kind of a rusty red and orange color. I drew on the back of my traceable. Oh, so like I left here. Oh, maybe I'll just take this off. So I drew in like a little shape here that'll help you define the ear. And then I drew the back of the head. You don't have to do that, but it lets you know kind of where the ear stops. Um, I'm hoping those little things help. And then put in the whiskers last. Get the whole rabbit on there. Oh, well, there's the back, in case you wanna see the back. What else do we need to know? I need to set my palette. I'm thinking, I was kind of thinking Burt Sienna because when you look at the the swatch on the tube, but I think it's rustier. It's not a red oxide. I don't know if you can see that, but it's redder than I want. So now I'm leaning towards maybe a raw sienna for my rabbit, or for at least my base color. It's kind of pretty. It also might be kind of light. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna land with good old burnt umber. I was sitting here thinking, trying to decide, I think I'm gonna work pretty much dark to light on this one. Um, acrylic's super forgiving, you can work light to dark. And I was trying to decide, I was thinking, oh, we should start you know, with this area because the tail's gonna be light. And then I was thinking, and I wasn't sure what brush I wanted to use, but then I thought, you know, the toughest part of this is gonna be the ear. 
So maybe I'll start up with some straight up Mars Black. Uh, and that's Burnt Umber. I got my brush a little wet. And even before I lighten my, my uh, traceable transfer that I've got on my painting here. Traceable transfer? Is that my, that's, I think I just made up a term. I'm gonna put in, this bunny has like little black detail. I think I'm gonna put that in and even let it dry overnight and then erase. And I may have to come back and paint it because it's detail, but that way I won't lose it. There's not a right or a wrong way to paint this. It's just sometimes you try and try and figure out what's the best way to go about it and then if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I don't know if I want these. It's got a little black line on the back of that ear and actually it has a little. And that, this may, this might be a waste of time because normally you put the detail in last. But I don't want to lose it. Yep, I'm thinking, I'm not talking. So I'm gonna put this detail in and then come back and show you to keep this video shorter, but you get, I'm just like almost dabbing little teeny here. I'll get it closer. Dabbing with little teeny strokes, nothing too spectacular. Hey, so I just dried it with a hair dryer. And then if you wanna take a screenshot, if you're painting along with me or you wanna pause the video, there's a closer look. And that may have been work that we didn't need to do right now. And then I didn't mention that was a number one, Simply Simmons. So just a one round. You could use a liner brush. And actually, I don't have handy a nice new angle brush. But when they're new, you can easily paint it with just the tip, even though it's quite a big brush. Oh, here. Is this one newer? Oh, no, that one's really fuzzy, too. I tend to... Uh, I like the scrub and stuff. <laughs> I tend to ruin my brushes. So now I'm thinking, I've got just a crappy, I think it used to be a little filbert. I think it used to be this. Let's see. Oh, that's a brand. I, I think it might have been something similar. That's a brand I got on uh, Amazon. I think it's a number three. But then I've trimmed it a little bit. I think we're just gonna use that and then maybe put in some, um, oh, I'll probably have the light coming from this direction. So let's just put in, actually you don't have to be too careful. Probably could even use a bigger brush if you wanted. So I wanna go in on my circle a little bit. Let's put in some black. Painting the edge. You can use any brush you want for this one too. Probably small. This is, I mean, if you're doing a, a little four by four like I am, small brush. But if you're doing, you know, if you're doing it at 200% size on an eight by eight, well then much bigger brushes. Unless you like detail and like, you know, like going slow with the little brushes. That's cool too. There's no right or wrong. Okay, so this rabbit's fur kind of, in my photo, kind of just goes all over the place. So I may, not sure where we're gonna go exactly, but I may, I don't know, just kind of wiggle and dab and dot. Now I've got a lot of paint on there. And then we're gonna want some black down here maybe. I dried it with a hair dryer and I'm gonna lighten up. 
The reason I lighten them up is they're just easier to paint over. Um, if you draw the traceable a little bit inside, oh, I put it in the trash, but you draw a little inside the lines and then you can paint over the lines so it doesn't grow too much on you. I want to keep the bunny a little bit away from the edge, but yeah, you also could let it go off the edge. Just because I want to do that doesn't mean you have to. I just think, um, well, and if you watch my sunflower video, which is you practice line work, um, I used charcoal and it ended up sticking in my paint. And so that was a little bit of a pain to get off too, which is another reason why I want to lighten this while I can. Okay. And then I mix, oh, two parts burnt umber and one part black and made kind of a gray. Um, black, brown. You can kind of see that better. I think I'm just going to start. I almost wonder if I want a bigger brush. Because I want to keep this in actual time. Let's see, that's actually darker. The back of the head's lighter, so after I did that, maybe I don't need to do that. Start getting some color down here. So the reason to use the littler brush would be to get, and I'm, it's so wet now, it's blending, um, be to get some brush strokey fur looking things going on. Um, the reason to use a bigger brush is to make it go quicker. We can come back with some, actually I'm going to do that, come back with some uh, fur strokes later. So I clean out my brush. Let's just kind of grab this old guy. So I think this guy used to be this guy and I've worn it down and it's fuzzy. Number four, Royal Lang Nickel. Yep, they were the same brush at once upon a time, or at least very similar. <laughs> I'll use this scubby guy. So all I'm thinking is lighter over here. It's all right if I get a little pink in there, it's not going to hurt anything. Actually, it probably should be browner. Usually the warm side where the sunlight is, or the, the sunlight side is warmer and then the shadow side is usually cooler. Okay, you get the idea what I'm doing here. I'll be back in a sec when I finish this. I want to keep the video a little shorter for those um, for those who want to see every step. You can't get this wrong. Just you know, lighter, warmer colors here might help you. Darker, cooler colors here may help you. But you can keep adding layers until you get the look you like. Oops! I thought I better pop in. So I had grabbed a little of my Naples yellow and mixed it with my burnt umber because I was just telling you guys about, you know, warmer, lighter browns where the sun sunlight's shining side. So I thought I'd pop in and tell you that I did that. Then I'm just almost kind of just beating it <laughs> with my brush. And you don't have to get this right on the first layer. And I really don't want to get it just right because layers really help you in acrylic painting. So, but anyway, I thought I'd better pop in. Now I'm grabbing some cooler and let you know that I did that. I mixed a little of the um, Naples yellow with the burnt sienna. I'm kind of liking this. This is a lot like the polar bear and the cardinal. 
where it's like I ended up stippling. Oops, I don't want that color. When I talk, I grab the wrong color. Um, you should check that one out, even if it's summertime when you're watching this. Um, it's really fun. I just kind of stippled the painting and it just, it turned out so cute. Thought of a tip. So one thing that can help, we'll see how it turns out. Um, so it's going to be a little lighter. There's going to be a little light coming around the the rabbit because its fur sticks out. So the darkest area is here by the tail. So I'm just putting in some sort of grayish, brownish. And I really, I think I'm really liking the stippling. And I think that'll be easier for you guys. And for those who like quick paintings, you know, sometimes like I do a really detailed pet portrait, small brush. I think this would, might be fun for those who don't like as much detail or you're a beginner and you want something just fun. So I grabbed a little dark brown there. I don't know if it's gonna be too much. I wanna keep it lighter so I, at least for now, so I don't forget where that ear goes. Now see, now I may have it too light. Let's put So that's some of my uh, Naples Yellow and Burnt Sienna. So <laughs> this thing is so mashed, but that's a good thing. I'm just trying to get a little couple, a uh, little fur sticking out. It's already starting to come together. Okay, I've got a phone call scheduled. So I'm going to quit and come back in a little while. But I don't want to stop playing because once I start figuring out how I want to do it and I get excited and I'm having fun. Plus, you know, the more you do this and put more layers on, it's just going to look better and better and better. Another tip. So if you watched my uh, palette knife cactus painting or the, I think it's also on the pineapple. Um, I talk about how, so yeah, you want the warmer colors on the sunlight side and the cooler colors on the shade side, but then don't like draw a line down the middle. Bring a few over here. You know, little bits of Oh, I've got a lot of Naples yellow in there. Little bits of um, yellow coming over the top or sneaking around or catching some long hairs, no pun intended there. <laughs> oh man, that was bad. Grab some long, uh, now I can't stop thinking about long hairs. Maybe that's why I should call this one instead of bunny butt. Uh, I bet you all groaned, I just groaned. I can't even paint now. <laughs> it's almost straight up Naples yellow. Oh, maybe I should do straight up Naples yellow because it's not really showing. Ah, there we go. So I think that's good for you guys to see. Like I couldn't figure out, I wasn't getting what I wanted and I couldn't figure it out. And sometimes it pops into my head or I just try something different. Here's a closer shot. If you want to screenshot that, stop the video. Um, I'm definitely going to put at least some whites on here. Um, I might even put more layers just because I like playing. Uh, we'll see. But really, that could be, especially on camera, that looks really good. Here, I don't know if I can focus that close. That looks pretty darn good. So let's concentrate now on the head a little bit because um, values do the work color gets the credit. So let's see what kind of value. I'm going to make the head grayer. And let's just see how that shade of gray looks. Of course, the thing is, is I, this is two different rabbits. I'm painting the heads from one rabbit and the 
butts from another rabbit, so that's kind of dangerous too. I'm not actually looking, they're not the same rabbit. This rabbit is browner in my reference photo and the head's grayer, but we can change it. Just get some color down. Actually, that's looking kind of, kind of dark. Acrylics dry darker. I should get a t-shirt that says that, acrylics dry darker. I don't know if anybody would want to wear that. I was thinking about, uh, so like I've got, um, oh, here it is, the sunflower on t-shirts. It's really cute. This one is just the black outline, like on gray t-shirts or yellow t-shirts. Um, I've got a cat like that on my online, uh, yeah, it's an online gallery and store. So it, you can get prints and t-shirts and mugs and phone cases and I think we'll go, I wasn't stippling, but I think we'll just go right back to stippling. And I've kind of got an even grayer, browner color that's drying out on me. Let's add a little water to it. Oh, that actually gets darker there. Now let's get some color down. I just grabbed a little bit of my brown gray mix. I want it lighter here. I want to. I want to keep that line pretty much. So I'm just dotting, dabbing. And we got a really light. I gotta watch the time too. I got a really light gray color. Right up in here. Oh, I haven't lightened that. I'm gonna lighten that up. Actually, I'm gonna let that dry and maybe come back tomorrow. We'll see. Hey guys, you wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you, but it's been four days since I have started painting this. <laughs> I got sidetracked with good things. Um, I took art to the gallery here in Omaha, Ginger's Hang Up. Hey, Ginger's Hang Up. Um, they have a beautiful framing studio. Um, man, they do they do amazing, amazing and interesting framing projects. They have tons of frames to choose from. And then they, they support local artists by showing their work, which is really cool. And then tomorrow I'm gonna take art to Self Expressions Gallery. Uh, that's in Nebraska City. It's a big gallery, lots of artists. Gosh, 40 some artists, I'd have to check. Um, it's right on Central Avenue, which is their main street in downtown Nebraska City. I was hoping to take um, these two as ornaments or little hangers, <clears throat> excuse me, to Nebraska City, but I'm not gonna get them done in time. That's okay. So I'm thinking we left off, I was painting painting there, and I think I was going to, I think I was going to put some light gray up here. It really doesn't matter. You can paint this in any order, um, but I am thinking it's easier to paint the white and over the dark so it goes together, goes together, so it overlays because the bunny tail, little, the little hairs in the bunny tail would be over the bunny butt. And I also looked, and it looks like I've got about 23 minutes on this video so far. So try not to make it too long. I know some of you like step by step, which I understand. I try to do a little bit for everybody, which I don't know if that's smart, but you know, some people consider themselves a beginner and they're you know, way more advanced than someone who just started yesterday. Well, the ears look pretty dark on my reference photo. Oh, and there's some pink that comes through. I wonder if we want to make kind of a muddy brown. That was a lot of paint. Kind of a muddy brown pink color in here. I don't know 
that I have a ton of things to talk about. Oh, I also sent um, art to my agent. She sent out an art request to all the artists she represents. And I had some art that fit what she was looking for. So then I figured, well, better send her some of the other things I was thinking about. So anyway, if I hadn't mentioned it, you wouldn't even know when I was gone for four days. <laughs> but the nice thing is, I, you know, my palette stayed. That's what, that's what's so nice um, about the styrofoam plate. Put another plate on top of it to protect it and I slip it in the gallon Ziploc baggie. I'm gonna grab a little straight up I tend to make some busy work out of my paintings because I go slow. Um, I don't talk and paint that well. I kind of, I just like to play with it. I'm just doing a little wet on wet blending here. Oh, and I think I've got, I know what my, one of my problems is. I have a pair of glasses I, I use just for sitting at my computer. It's really nice, but I, things are a little blurry. I'll be right back. That's better. It's so funny, I'm like, why am I struggling to see? <laughs> I think I would know right away. using a number one round. Um, Simply Simmons, I got it at Michael's. I don't remember how much they cost, but I don't think they're very expensive. A couple dollars. Let's see, we want some... You can get as loose or as accurate as you want with this. And one, one thing that I'm gonna say out loud, so hopefully I remember, because my reference photo doesn't show it, but I usually add a couple whiskers. Um, I think my traceable had the whiskers. So that's actually sort of the side of the face right there. Do any of you, I think this is a, would you call it a wild rabbit? It reminds me of the kind I see in my backyard. Um, gosh, when I was first married, we had a lop, lopped eared rabbit. The ears hung down. Um, it was so cute. It was white with brown spots. Do you guys have rabbits as pets? That would be fun. My art table's wiggly. Let's see, that actually gets darker, but maybe... see when I paint. They always say you should use the biggest brush you can, you know, and deliberate strokes. When I get down to these little brushes like this, I tend to get kind of fussy. And I don't think it's wrong. But if you're not that way, don't worry about it. Many art teachers would tell you not to do what I'm doing right now. Unless you're going for 
don't know, like really realism, <laughs> really realism, ultra realism, maybe is what they call it. Oops, got some water. Let's let that dry. There's something there I don't like. A little white. There, that's better. I may need another coat too. Oh, and you can turn it. Sometimes I don't turn it when I'm videoing for you guys because I don't know if that drives you crazy. Oh, and my voice got quieter because I'm thinking. And usually pulling paint is easier. See how I turned it so I could pull it. And I see like I've got a little, little bit I missed. Oh, it's starting to look pretty good. Let's see if we can get the other ear done here. So the other ear is looking towards us. That on camera. I might put in some more. I'm gonna grab some straight up pink after I mix that. Oh, that looks pretty good. There might be. Down there. Probably should let that dry. Just cleaning off my brush. Drying it or getting it fairly clean, and then I I get the majority off of it off of the paint off on a paper towel. So then I'm not pouring that much. Here, I don't know if you can see my water isn't very dirty. So not pouring much paint down the sink. I've oh, I just I assume that that's better. I mean, this is going in the landfill, so it's not great. But I don't know. I assume it's better than going in down into the water. I don't know where the water goes. I know it goes to a treatment plant. But I don't know. So if anybody knows differently or better, I noticed I didn't cover my canvas there. It dried and pulled away. So I'm just putting a little pink in there. After I wash my brush. <laughs> I think I'm gonna work on the tail a little bit and let that pink in that ear dry. And I also want to remember to add some whites. So I'm gonna get a, I think I'm gonna use this, what used to be a little filbert. I think it used to be like this. But then I, oops, trimmed it. It's beat up and fuzzy. Sometimes beat up old brushes make nicer texture. And then, I will just kind of take this off white color we got we have sitting there. I'm trying to decide what I want to add to it. Just a teeny. And this is gonna be probably too much black. Offload some of the black. So I'm kind of looking for a tail shadow color. And it may end up looking just gray by the time. Yeah, that looks pretty gray. <laughs> that happens. By the time we get it on here, especially against that pink. So I'm just kind of making messy little marks. I don't know if you can see it, so we'll get it closer. I don't know if my phone will focus. And really, we could cover it all. I'm just going to grab a little of the darker gray. So I'm just thinking the light's coming from this direction. The light's catching a little bit of that ear, glowing through that ear a little bit. And then we'll have some lighter whites up there. Trying to make these kind of random. For me, 
think I think that's the, one of the biggest challenges. Once you learn some tips and you practice, like it's kind of like practice hitting golf balls or you can tell I like sports as a kid, practice shooting free throws. But with art, once you kind of get the practice down and you know, I don't know, some basic tips that help you, I think the hardest thing is to be random. Sometimes I think I call it cloning. It's like the same stroke over and over again. Probably, probably can see some right here. Just have some white. And I'm just kind of dotting. You, you do what works for you, what you like, what you're comfortable with. But I'm trying to make this a actual time video. Because it's easy. Um, I think beginners might like the actual time. You can always fast forward to the end to see what it looks like and then just use the traceable. You know, you can do or speed it up. You can adjust the, the replay speed and you just speed it up. That's pretty cool that YouTube lets you do that. Oh, and I got someone sent $10 today. I think they downloaded the watercolor booklet. It's a 22 page booklet with eight traceable traceables in it, traceable classes, has photo steps. Um, several of the classes have videos too. I haven't heard back. I sent her an email and thanked her. That was so nice. I really appreciate the support. Right now I'm saving up for a microphone. Besides paying like my phone bill. <laughs> okay, I think we might let that dry. I like to paint. Oh, I forgot to paint over the edge there. I like to paint over the edge. It's starting to look cute, cute, cute. I like cute. I like happy. I like painting. I was stressed out the other day. Um, stressed out. I haven't been that stressed out in a long time. Worried. You know, you can't sleep. You're telling yourself, you know, thinking about it over and over again is not going to help you. Um... And then I was painting on this rabbit. I was painting the, I just got, I was when I started painting the dots, calm me down. The repetition was really relaxing. And I, I forget that, you know, really it's not the end result. It's, you know, focusing on something simple, what color you're gonna use. It's kind of like coloring in a coloring book for me. It's just like, just relax. Um, I, although I know when I first started golfing, I was super nervous. So if you're a new painter, don't worry if you're nervous. That's totally normal. Let's see. What do I want to do here? I'm talking. But oh, I was so thankful I had a painting going, and I'm like, oh, this is really good for me. It's very helpful. Okay, the light I don't think is coming from this direction, but it's the side of the face. So we're going to follow my photo reference. If it doesn't make sense or it's too weird, we'll change it. So I'm just dabbing on some gray. I think I said what inspired me to paint this bunny butt on a couple of ornaments is that I sold a, I think they were 10 by 10. I had a bunny butt and a bunny front. I recently sold them. It was mostly beige colors. I'm like, oh, that'd be really cute on these little four by fours. I grabbed a little white, which is probably premature. I don't want to forget where it is. If you haven't checked it out, I've got a new cloud painting that should post before this one, or a cloud art tip video. Um, it just shows you how to make white clouds on blue, so it's not, I don't get into all the, well, clouds have color and, you know, they're, it's like a sunset color, that kind of thing, but just showing you different tools you can use to make clouds. It turned out really nice. Should check that one out. 
I made a palette knife cloud. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I need to think. It's grabbing kind of that grayish color. So what's kind of nice about this is you can just dab because it's so little. It's not a big painting. It's not like you have to have a lot of a lot of like certain brush stroke skill to make a cool leaf or something, you know? Kind of like toll painting. Where you double load the brush and oh sorry guys. You know, just use whatever brush you have. I'm gonna add a little pink here. Just to define that ear a little bit. So that's you could call that negative space painting. I'm painting. See how it defined the edge of that ear a little bit better? And then I'm just gonna scumble it out. I want that tip to show. Let's see. I'm probably going really long, but we're almost done. I also try to, um, don't want the videos to go too long because they take hours to upload. Um, favorite daughter edits and uploads for me is so it's awesome. She's awesome. But it's like, you know, if my videos keep getting longer and longer, oops, it's just more work for her, too. I'm not sure I like that. So I'm really covering. I wonder if we need a little glazing medium. Let's grab some pink. Here's where I get too particular. You know, no one knows what the reference photo looks like. And if you paint this and you're using my painting as the reference, no one's going to know what that looks like. You can do what you like. The traceable gives you the structure, so if you're not comfortable drawing or don't want to take the time to draw, I'm having a little trouble here. I'm trying to get that dark back in there so I don't lose it. There we go. Hmm. Pulled out a couple little hairs that really aren't there, but I kind of like that. All right, let's work down here a little bit. Picking up some pinky gray. a little dark gray. That did not do a darn thing. So one thing nice about acrylics, I'm painting a little thick here, but you could paint a little thinner. And acrylics really look good with layers. And so if you kind of have thin and then build it up to thicker, because sometimes it's a little harder to paint over um, bumpy areas, bumpy painting, you know. But you can just keep adding layers and layers and layers and layers if you want. Just take a little longer to dry. And layers and layers and layers on an oil painting could take six months to dry. Just grab a little bit of white because I want to define. I want to make sure that that, here maybe we'll just do this. Got a little dark brown. Eh, I think that brown's drying on me. sure we see okay so what I want to do is have some gray take some of this color I want to I want to kind of have some grayish furish <laughs> I just said furish um, in the ears this, this is actually kind of Maybe we'll just put it in. So I'm just looking for a lighter. My brush is so dirty. I just wiped it off a little bit on the paper towel. There we go. I don't want white, white. That's too 
light. I think maybe one of the things that beginner painters need to do is it's okay when you don't get the values just right. Sometimes it takes three times. Well, how many times have I tried here? Here, I think that's gotta work out. And then I think we want some. Let's see, how does that look? Well, it's actually gray, so I think we'll just. So I'm doing sideways strokes like it's a little a bit of fur. Hmm. I need to deal with that right there. It's about the same value in my reference photo. I'm gonna take my round brush. Black is strong, that's why I'm creeping up the side of my plate here. You can see I've gotten a couple, sh I have a couple shades of gray. Let's see how that one works. Ooh, I might, I might have hit that one on the nose. And I think I need a little. Oh, it actually gets pretty white right there, but I might. What do I want to do? I'll grab some white and see what that does. I don't know if it's going to twist it. This is still wet, so now it's blending in. If it's not still wet, don't worry about it. When you paint it, Like that. I've got two brushes going, so I'm washing out my round one. Let's go back a little darker. And I kind of need some darker. Some darker gray. And really, you could have stopped and called this done if you want. Brush is dirty, but I think I like that. It's kind of dabbing. Well, it's darker in my reference photo, but I'm not sure if I want to change that. Okay. Do we like, I'm gonna look through my video camera here. Do we like the paint coming through here? And maybe you wanna take a screenshot. Well, actually, it might be kinda of nice. That's actually the background coming through. Which is one of the reasons why I did a pinkish background. Trying to lightly dab and nothing's coming off. Let's try it again. Oh, I kind of like that. Okay, the effort or in the I've been painting 10 minutes or more, which is making this video long now. Let's add, make more of that as it dry. I added just a smidge of water to see if it would wake up. I'm 
I'm not sure I want to add white for highlights. Just work up. Save your, a lot of times it's a uh, good trick. Oh, and then turn your brush a little bit. Um, is to save white for last, even though I put white on there. So you just have little sparkles and bits of white. So really all that is is a ball. We're, it's, and it's like pointillism. We're just making dots. Oops, I'm a big dot. I'm about to come back and fix that. And it's drying, do you see how it's drying darker? I'm gonna have to come back a little lighter. I'm gonna grab, even though I probably will have to, it's bugging me. So you can see my brush is dirty, so I just kind of laid it down. <laughs> so I had brown on the end there. So now it's pretty much running out of paint. So you can play with that. I'm gonna paint this right here. Remember I didn't paint the... Ooh, that's looking kind of good. Do I need... A little pinky gray in here. So I have quite a bit of white. You can see how you can keep going up in value, down in value, up in value. So this is going down in value a little bit, a little darker color. And then I'm like, oh. I'm just looking for a little more. A little more contrast. If I can get it off my messy brush, there we go. the darker so if you guys haven't seen my polar bear and cardinal painting um, it's called I've got your back but that's usually not the titles of the videos because you know people are looking for different kinds of paintings they're not looking for whatever I title them you know um, it has lots of this in it you might enjoy it the cardinal is hilarious he's got such, he's got a funny face Birds can look kind of grumpy, especially from, I don't know what how to describe the angle, but they can look kind of grumpy. Okay, I think, do we like that? I wish you, I could hear you. Are we done? Oh, we could splatter this too. I like to splatter. I think I want to add some whites. Let's do some straight up whites. Just get the water off my brush there. Oops, that's a big one. So I'm thinking the light might come around the rabbit just a little bit. I don't know if those are gonna show when they dry. I don't really like that big guy. We paint him out a little bit. And then should we add Okay, I got my round. Let's put a little bit on the end. This isn't how it looks in the reference photo, but we're gonna catch that edge. There's a little more oomph. 
And I think we need to catch. Okay. I need a couple coats. Titanium white's an opaque white compared to like um, zinc white or mixing white, but sometimes it can still take a couple coats. I'm just dabbing. Maybe the light's coming from this side. Because it doesn't really show against that pink. Clean up my brush. So it's quicker if you like use a, you use a color as many places as you can think you want to use it. But I tend to change and wash my brushes a lot, which wears them out faster. But I don't want to forget what I was thinking. So I'm just grabbing some of my, oh, that was darker, I had it right the first time. Grabbing some of my muted pink. That's too light. <laughs> I think that's good for you guys to see though. Sometimes it just takes a little. So I want to make that edge show a little bit better. I show this in some of my watercolor videos too, where it's like, you can come back and make some of your edges pop a little bit more. You're not stuck with how you painted the background. I think we're gonna add some whiskers and call it done. Give you another look here. I mean, I don't, it, in real life, that ear would not be that pink, but I like it. That's what's also fun about art too, is you can, let's see, you can do whatever you want. I'm trying to decide if I want to use this brush. Because uh, the whiskers would be super fine. Sorry guys, I'm looking for, can you see that? My hand's pink. I think you can see that. It's a lighter brush, it's longer and skinnier. I'm gonna get it wet. Let's start with, I want it a little grayer maybe. We want it to flow. So I'm adding a little bit of water. You could use a matte medium, flow medium. All right, let's add. Oh, that's too light. All right, let's see how this one looks. Let's see, I want it to kind of go It's okay if it skips. So I'm gonna put a little dot out here. Cool. And I think I'm gonna make, now this is getting fussy. Grab a little bit of water. The water's something you'll just get down if you're new to painting. And then I didn't get it right. You know, if it was really bad, I could have wiped it off because this background's been dry for four days. Um, let it dry paint over it with some pink, some white and some pink, whatever you need to. to. So the whiskers on this side, I think are gonna be a little darker. Oh, it doesn't look any darker. And they're gonna be, I just missed. And they're gonna be shorter. I kinda like having a dot there even though I wouldn't have a dot. I'm gonna clean up my brush. And since it wasn't that long ago since we painted this area, I'm just gonna grab a little 
whitish. Well, now I want to play. I don't know if you, I watch other YouTube artists that do, I'm hoping to do live paint demo eventually. I have to figure it out and get some help um, with it so someone can watch, you know, the chat and stuff while I'm painting. But, um, you know, I've seen them go, okay, I'm done. And then they see stuff that they want to change. I mean, that happens to me all the time too. I'm just adding some little highlights over here because the light might be catching it. Okay, let's call it done, you guys. Um, I'll put the, the traceables up on my website. So if you aren't comfortable drawing, especially the ear part, you have some help with that. I really, really appreciate you spending all this time with me. Um, like, like, uh, subscribe, hit the bell, um, leave a comment. The comments are really helping. Plus, they're fun. I love connecting with all of you. Great big art hugs. And I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.